Hello friends, good afternoon to all of you. So I am back with another video on sociology option subject for UPSC C means examination. In this video we are going to cover sampling and reliability and validity are sections under research method and analysis. So friend please do this three hours and will really motivate me to do this awesome course. Share as much as possible so that more and more people will get benefited. Comment and like the video and ask any doubt if you have and hit the subscription button below the video as hard as you can. And now you can also follow us on FB page that is facebook.com slash unorthodox academy. So friend as you know that we are covering slot to autonomous topic and by this video we will finish the slot to autonomous topics and we have covered these topics of paper 2 in this video we are going to just finish the last topic of this section that is sampling and reliability and validity and the last video we covered variables and hypothesis so friend sampling so first basically population or universe is too large for the researcher to survey all its member because of its cost the number of personnel to be employed or the time constraints a small carefully chosen example is extracted to represent the whole so the sample is expected to reflect the characteristics of the populations so now we see the classification so sampling methods are classified into two types that is probability and or non probability if the purpose of research is to draw conclusion or make prediction affecting the population as a whole as most research usually is then one must use probability sampling but if one is only interested in exploring how a small group perhaps even a representative group is doing for the purpose of illustration or explanation then way one may use non probability sampling so now we see the types of sampling in the probability and non probability sampling so in non uh, in probability sampling we have first random sampling then systematic sampling then stratified sampling and then we have cluster sampling and in non probability we have convenience sampling judgment sampling purposive sam sampling quota sampling and snowball sampling so now we see one by one all of them so in probability sampling the first is thing that is that in probability samples each member of population has a known non zero probability of being selected so the key point behind all probabilistic sampling approach is random selection so the advantage of probabilities as sampling and approach is is random selection so the advantage of probability sampling is that sampling error can be calculated which is the degree to which sample might differ from the population so now first we see random sampling and it is the purest form of probability sampling each member of the population has equal and known chances of being selected for it and the prerequisite for a random sample is that each and every time item of the universe has to be identified so random selection is effective in a clearly defined population that is relatively small and self contained so when the population is large it is often difficult or impossible to identify its each and every member so the assemblage of available subject becomes biased so one obtains a list of all resident or the voter list or telephone directory and then select a sample using sequence of number from random random numbers table so random numbers can also be created in numerous computer software too now we see the systematic sampling and it is also called as nth name selection technique after the required sample size has been calculated every nth record is selected from a list of populations members as long as the list does not contain any hidden order this sampling method is good as the random sampling method its only advantage over the random sampling techniques is its simplicity Systematic sampling is frequently used to select a specified number of record from a computer file. So now we see stratified sampling and this commonly used probability method that is superior to random sampling because it reduces the sampling error. A stratum is a subset of population that shares at least one common characteristic. So example of a stratum might be males, females or manager or non-managers. The researcher, researcher first identifies the relevant strata and their actual present representation in the population. A random sampling is then used to select a sufficient number of subjects from each stratum. Then sufficient basically refers to here a sample size which is large enough for the researcher to be reasonably be confident that the stratum represent the whole population. Stratified sampling is most successful when first is that it is within the variance of each stratum that is it is less than overall variance of the population and the second one is when is the strata is the population 
are of unequal size or of have unequal incidence then the third one is when sampling is cheaper in the strata now we see the last one in the no, uh, probability sampling that is cluster random sampling and it is useful when the population is dip dispersed across a wide geographic region this method allows one to divide the population into clusters and then select the clusters at random thereafter one can either study all the members of the selected cluster or again take random sample or systematic sample of the sample cluster if the latter system is followed it is called multi stage fall is sampling and this method for example could be effective to study a tribal group or community that is dispersed in different areas of the geographical locations so the village could be used as clusters and can be randomly selected now we see there non probability sampling so basically in a non probability sampling members are selected from the population in some non random manner that is means in this method the degree to which the sample differs from the population remains unknown The non probability methods including convenience sampling judgment sampling quota sampling and snowball sampling. So first we see the convenience sampling it is used in exploratory research where the investigators investigators interested in getting an inexpensive approximation of the fact. As the name implies a sample is selected because it is convenient. Also called it is as haphazard or accidental. This method is based on using people who are captive audience just happen to be walking by or show a special interest in research the use of volunteers an example of convenient sampling this method is often used during preliminary research reports to get a gross estimate of the result without incurring the cost or time required to select a random sample now the next one is judgment sampling it is a common non probability method the researchers select the sample based on judgment this is used in extension of the convenience sampling For example a researcher may decide to draw the entire sample from one representative village even though the populations may be distributed over number of a village when using this method the researcher feels that the chosen sample is representative of the entire population now the next one is purposive sampling so it is much similar to the judgment sampling but is where the researcher targets group of people believed to be a typical or average or a group especially picked from picked from some unique purpose the researchers never knows if the sample is representative or the populations and this method is largely limited to exploratory research then we see the quota sampling and it is the non probability sampling equivalent of stratified sampling like a stratified sampling the researcher first identifies identifies the strata which is in the probability sampling and their proportions in the populations then convenience of judgment or sampling is used to select the required number of subjects from each stratum the researcher resorts to haphazard or accidental sampling and make no effort to contact people who are difficult to reach this differs from a stratified sampling where the strata are filled by random sampling then the next one is snowball sampling it is specially special non probability method used when the desired sample characteristics is rare it may be extremely difficult or cost prohibitive to locate respondent in these situations the snowball sampling relies on the referrals from initial subject to generate additional subjects in other words snowball sampling compromise comprises identification of respondent who in turn refers researchers to other respondents this technique provides a mean to access relatively invisible or invulnerable social groups while this technique can dramatically lower the search cost it becomes at the expense of introducing bias because the technique itself reduces the likelihood that the sample will represent a good cross sections of the population for example an investigator finds a rare genetic trait in a person and starts tracing his pedigree to understand the origin inheritance and etiology of the disease so basically the reliability of a sample taken from a population can be assessed by the spread of the sampling distribution measured by the standard deviation of this distributed and it is called the standard error as a general rule the larger is the size of the sample the smaller the standard error Now there are some advantage of the sampling the first one is when there is a large group population or universe sampling techniques is the best suited for the collection of data and its economies economics money time and effort basically it reduces money time and effort a higher percentage of accuracy can be ensured only through sampling survey 
So the sample techniques enables the investigator to collect the required information from a relatively large size of population or the availability of data as unlimited in character. So that's why there are certain types of study where census method cannot be adopted at all. Sampling method is basically to be necessarily followed to make an attempt to evaluate in such cases. When the items of an universal population is more homogeneous in nature, sampling techniques is more feasible and useful because all are same because they are homogeneous. Now there are some limitations of sampling because when the various units of the survey populations are not alike and liable to change frequently the conclusion derived from one set of units are not comparable with another sets of units and will vary. If due care is not taken in conducting sample survey through a proper selection of sample units, the conclusion will be much misleading and erroneous in nature. In a sample survey, only a small proportion of entire universe or population is studied and thus inference are made through the entire universe or population. So there is always likely to be a certain amount of inaccuracy or errors in the such inference. Such errors are known as sampling error or the sampling fluctuation and such sampling errors are not likely to be there in a census survey. Now the next topic is reliability and validity. So basically physical and life scientists can directly observe most of their subject matter and it is which gives them a distinct coverage advantage for assessing validity and reliability. Social scientists on the other hand do not have this advantage because most of the concepts they examine are abstract rather than concrete. So how does one observe for example abstract concepts such as self-esteem and Ma marital satisfaction. So such measurement can be made and with a great deal of validity and reliability and doing so however requires a thorough understanding of these requirements and how to assess them in practice. So now that's why we will discuss validity, reliability and the procedure for assessing them in sociological research. So the first one is validity and according to Carmine and Zella, validity is, is the extent to which an instrument measures and what is is supposed to measure. Scientists, uh, scientists distinguish among different types of validity and across discipline refers to the same type of validity using different names which sometimes can create confusion about what type of val validity is being assessed. So basically validity can be classified as either non-empirical or empirical. So now we see both non-empirical and val uh, empirical validity. The first, first one is non-empirical validity. So by empirical we mean related to observation or data based. So the first form of validity we will discuss is non-empirical which meaning not related to observation or data analysis. So content validity sometimes called face or representational validity and it is the consensus that is the intersubjective nego negotiated opinion of the community of a scholar as to whether the items used to measure are construct referred to the domain of the constructor and to no other construct that is the community of a scholar in is all persons trained within a scientific discipline type legal persons with a PhD degree. So in other words the issue of content validity is does the community of scholars agree that a particular set of observed variable is appropriate or to measure a particular physical entity or abstract construct. So it is important to note that content validity is assessed only by the opinions of the community of the scholars. So there is no empirical assessment of content validity. Now we see the next term is that is empirical validity and basically empirical val validity is assessed by evaluating the extent to which a measure relates to other measures consistent with theoretically derived hypothesis concerning the concept being measured. Empirical validity is intrinsically linked to the theory. Hence we assume a measure of a concept is valid if theoretically derived hypothesis relating to the concept or relating the concept to another concept receives support through observations and data analysis. So if we hypothesize for example that the greater the self-esteem the greater the marital satisfactions and this hypothesis receives empirical support then we assume we have measured each concept correctly and that each concept has empirical validity. So the next term is reliability and according to Carmine Zenzella reliability is the extent to which a measurement instrument or procedure yields the same result on repeated trial. So the important term is repeated trial. So without reliable measures, scientists cannot build or test theory. 
and therefore cannot develop productive and efficient procedure for improving human well-being so now how to do reliable assessment so basically reliable assessment is the evaluations we make of how much measurement error and we have experience in collecting our data so to collect data with as a little measurement error as possible we must so develop measures of construct that are as valid as possible and follow methodological procedures that have been shown to reduce measurement error as much as possible so suppose we want to know the weight of our classroom from wall to wall and if we use a yardstick for example and and measure very carefully it is likely we will record very nearly the same number of this width across repeated trials so the important thing here is repeated trials so we we will then have a very reliable measure of weight which would result in a small standard error for a parameter estimate that included width as a variable assuming we also measured the other variable in the hypothesis with high with high reliability so now suppose we want to measure the self esteem of the pupil in our classroom so uh, unfortunately we cannot absorb self esteem with our senses so we must devise some type of measuring instrument that can be used with the high reliability so how do we build a measuring instrument of for self esteem that provides very similar measures on repeated trials so we must meet three conditions for it so the first one is we must define self esteem as precisely as possible by describing its conceptual domain that mean its meaning and without confusing it with the domain of other construct so self esteem must have a clear definition and it must not be confused with the definition of other construct so the next thing is that we must have good indicators of self esteem so once which with high content validity so we must collect our data with as much accuracy as it is possible so analyzing the above discussion we can conclude that reliability is necessary but insufficient condition for validity in research so reliability is a necessary precondition of validity and validity may be sufficient but not necessary condition for reliability so in other in other words we can say that both complement each other but not coterminates coterminous that means they are not being of equal extent or scope or durations so thank you guys for listening and watching this video please do things and now you can follow us on fb page that is facebook.com/unorthodoxacademy and hit the subscription button below the video as hard as you can thank you